Thanks for watching AM Northwest. Here to help you make the right choices when it comes to your retirement planning, we welcome back from Swanson Financial, David Swanson. How you doing? Great. Good to see you. So let's talk about this. How do, we, how do we know what choices are the right choices? Well, becoming educated and informed is the absolute key to making wise choices, mm -hmm. okay? So if you look at just selecting Social Security, there's over 81 different choices that a husband and wife could make. Um, so it would be a good idea to maybe examine more than just one or two, but take a look at quite a few of them to see if you're picturing the best plan for you. Now, when you start adding on pension distribution options and should I roll over my 401k, what should I do, all the different choices involved with the assets that you've accumulated for your whole life, it becomes overwhelming for some people. So a really good idea is to do what you can to gather as much information to make those right choices. When you say choices about Social Security, what are you saying? Like when to retire, when to take Social Security, how much to take? Is that what you're saying? Boy, that is it for sure. So um, what what we find, and when we meet with a, a lot of people, we find that sometimes people are actually working when they don't have to be. Wow. They, they think that they need to continue to stack money on top of each other um, until they hit some point, some dollar number, and then they can be free. When in fact, if you organize and look at what you have and claim your Social Security at the right time, be it early, middle, or the latter part of the ranges of Social Security, you could find that you won't have to work and have just as much or even in some cases more money by not working. Then it becomes kind of wow. interesting to say, do I want to go to work or do I like to stay home with my spouse? What are some of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to retirement planning? Well, one of the biggest mistakes that they make is they don't um, plan out everything. Okay. Um, second big thing is that they take too much risk. So they, as you're working through your whole life, you build up your assets and you grow those assets. Um, but when you retire, it's a completely different story. The story now is I need income that lasts for the rest of my life, income I could never outlive. So you need to convert those assets to a cash flow, but people sometimes keep their investments the same way. If the market goes down, right. you have less money, it's hard to, 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 to predict the income if you're in too much risk. And some people may not know what they have available to them. Like you talk about people who were married to someone for 10 years, then divorced. They have access to that person's Social Security, right? Another claiming strategy. Right. Or that person may have passed away and they're entitled to double the benefits. So, um, that's why you have to look out. Every person has to look out for themselves. The, the government provides these opportunities. And oh, by the way, Helen, you know Social Security is not a gift. First job you ever had, you and yeah. your employer were contributing to Social Security. Right. You need to be alive to get it. So why don't you figure out how to get the most out of Social Security that you possibly can to augment that with all the other savings that you have. And maybe you can do something else than, than working full time. Maybe you can just work a little bit, volunteer at your church, enjoy your life. And that's the thing that I really like to bring to people is just the organization of if you have what you have here, maybe there's an opportunity that you can do the second half of your life sooner than what you thought. And you, you, I know you do workshops, so mm -hmm. people can learn all about that. What, let's say they're going to a workshop. Do they bring in all their information with them, tax information, Social Security information? Does that help you? Um, that's just a, just a great question. So we offer workshops all throughout the Portland area. There's about seven locations. We have a huge one tomorrow night at the Sherwood Convention Center. Beautiful place for anyone who hasn't been out there. They did a fantastic job at the community center out there. Um, we, uh, they're free. Um, all you need to do is call our office and register or send us an email so you get on the list so we know that you're coming. Uh, and um, it will be one hour on all the different claiming strategies for Social Security, okay. how to select your pension, good ideas for you to look at. Now, once you start hearing kind of the same idea over and over again, you can kind of understand that, boy, this really makes sense to me. Right. But if we can introduce you to some new information to confirm some things that you already know, boy, then you're getting better prepared to be able to make that step into the next half year. Okay, life. now we have some viewer questions yep. that have, folks have sent in, so mm -hmm. we're gonna ask you some of those. We'll be right back with more answers to your retirement questions, so don't go away.
Thanks so much for watching AM Northwest this morning. We're back with David Swanson of Swanson Financial, and now he's answering your retirement questions. So let's start with this first question. What should I be looking for in a detailed Social Security and retirement income plan? Number one, it's got to be written, okay? Number two, it has to be comprehensive. Number three, it needs to have an inventory of all of the assets that you have, as well as all of the income potential opportunities that you have, pension, rental income, uh, Social Security, and so on and so forth. Uh, the plan needs to incorporate your expenses. How much do you plan to spend? The hopes and dreams that you have in your retirement, the vacations, the money you want to uh, uh, give to your children, the money you want to set aside in the future for other things that you want to do. That needs to be and, and if you don't have a written plan that incorporates some of those things or most of those things you really need to find somebody that can help you do that because without that you have no course to go forward and if you're part of a couple shouldn't you both come in together oh absolutely and um, this might be a shock to you but some couples think differently than their husband and wife think of <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so we actually do uh, we do questionnaire that gets the attitude of both, and they are oh. required not to share that before they come in. So I know what one the the wife's focus may be on safety and income and growth and protection and their children, and then the husbands. And then the first thing we do is we sit down and we look at those because the plan has to be incorporation of both of those right. together. You can't have one plan just even for the breadwinner and one for not. It needs to be for everybody going forward or it just simply won't work. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. What questions should I be asking when seeking retirement planning advice? First thing is your advisor a fiduciary, all right? Fiduciary, if they are a fiduciary, they have to disclose the fee. They have to, uh, they have to make sure that they tell you any material conflicts of interest. They're responsible for the advice that they give you. If they're not a fiduciary, they're not. As an independent investment advisor for the last 20 years, I am a fiduciary. We are responsible for those uh, that we make sure that we, we do what we say we're going to do and that we are responsible for that. But just make sure that your advisor is a fiduciary. If they're not, maybe you should be looking for someone who and is. And does that mean as a fiduciary that you are looking out for your client's best interest? You absolutely must. You must push your client's best interest in front. And interestingly, we have to legislate that that has to be the fact yeah. in our industry. And it, it, the rule was supposed to go into effect on April 10th. It may or may not, um, with all the regulations that seem to be completely being you know, obliterated in front of us. Um, but nonetheless, I think the industry is moving towards that. But you as an investor, you need to know that the person that you're working with is absolutely thinking about what's best for you before their own self-interest. Okay, one person wrote, we work, can we skip the workshop and contact you directly? Yeah, we have a lot of people that just simply are at full throttle to try to get through what they have. And they don't have time to come to our workshops, even on a Thursday night for an hour. Uh, Tuesday for an hour. Anyway, they can call our office directly. We will work out what we can with them. We try to accommodate people to, to sure. make it make sense for them. Um, why do I need to plan anything? The government will provide for me, won't it? It really will. And uh, if you only have Social Security, you really don't have a plan. Um, it's your income is coming in. You can make a strategy of when you can get it. But you weren't a good saver before. Those who have saved and worked and hard and figured out um, how, how to uh, be happy and, and content in retirement, that started a long time ago, yeah. you know? And so if you just have Social Security, um, it's gonna be a rough road because that's what your number is. And we will help you get the best strategy for Social Security, but you're limited and you know, you're not alone because 37% of the people who retired in this country only have Social Security to live oh, on. Oh, wow. Oh, that's scary. Well, we want to tell folks, if you'd like to find out more and more information about the workshops, give Swanson Financial a call, 503-603-9900. We'll put the information, too, on our website at k2.com. David, thank you very much. Appreciate it.